All right. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for tonight's presentation of Zing Sampler, New Harvest Olive Oils. We're really excited to have you with us tonight. Uh, my name is Tessie. For those of you who I haven't met, I'm our events coordinator here at Zingerman's Delicatessen. I've been with Zingerman's for the last 15 years um, and a little over uh, 10 years of that has been uh, here at the Delicatessen. Um, and I've been really excited to sort of dive into the world of olive oil. Growing up in mid-Michigan, you know, well, olive oil was olive oil and it wasn't anything super uh, important. But, uh, you know, as I have learned more about oils over time, um, I'm really excited that uh, we're talking about new harvest today and all sorts of nuance and fun things about that. I'm joined today in presenting by uh, Wendy, who is one of our uh, specialty food staff and our local olive oil sommelier. Uh, so she'll be joining uh, in the conversation and talking about all, some of the more technical side of the olive oils that we're tasting today and how to taste and all of that good stuff. Uh, because we are a relatively small group this evening, you're welcome to chime in with any questions uh, as we go through tonight's presentation. We do ask that if you don't have a question actively, um, you go ahead and keep yourself on mute just to reduce the amount of background noise in the Zoom. Uh, down at the bottom of your screen in the left-hand corner are your volume control as well as your video control uh, so you've got your mute and video buttons down there. Um, and if you are having internet connectivity, uh, a lot of people find that having your video off can help with that. Uh, so that's uh, always an option. I am going to go ahead and give Wendy and I a spotlight here so everybody can see us. If you'd rather see the entire group up in the top right hand corner is the, the view settings. You can always go to gallery view um, if you don't want to uh, see what we've got here. There's that. And then Wendy, I cannot spotlight you without your video on, unfortunately. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Hey, there we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. All right. Hi, Wendy. How are you tonight? Hi, how are you? I'm good. Uh, so we're tasting some uh, new harvest olive oils tonight. Uh, I'm going to let you both introduce yourself because you have a lot of credentials in olive oil that... Uh, I don't have memorized for you, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but also give us a little bit of uh, intro into the, the world of New Harvest and what's exciting about what we're tasting tonight. Yeah, great. Thanks, Tessie. I appreciate it. So um, I'm Wendy, um, and I am going to uh, help with Tessie's help explain to you how to taste uh, these new olive oils, in particular, these four um, new harvest olive oils that we have at the deli. Um, uh, I, uh, before the pandemic, uh, became very interested in the olive oils um, working at the deli and was fortunate enough to uh, be able to uh, study uh, and become an olive oil sommelier. So um, with that, I'm able to bring back to the deli to uh, my coworkers and to you as our guests. Um, all the love and passion that goes into olive oil uh, production as well as uh, tasting it and enjoying it. So again, this class tonight is, is exactly um, uh, part of this um, exciting um, immediateness of uh, this brightness of fresh olive oil that we so love and adore. So um, everybody should have at least four of these little uh, two ounce containers of olive oil. Um, they all should be labeled and we have them set in a certain order that uh, we, Tessie and I decided would be um, the most pleasing way to taste these olive oils um, because we're gonna find in these fresh uh, Novello olive oils, there's gonna be a lot going on. They're really exciting, they're really alive. Um, and so again, making sure you've got some water or your bread to have to taste in between is gonna be a really good way to kind of cleanse your palate uh, in between these. So let me just kind of go over how we wanna uh, taste these. 
um, because the, the important part of this is gonna be talking about uh, what you're tasting, uh, what you like about this, um, there's no right or wrong answers. We've included a tasting wheel that is a, a good springboard for giving you some ideas about what you, how to identify what you might be tasting. Uh, but again, there's no right or wrong answer. Um, so let me just show you real quick. This is the little container of olive oil. What we do is we like to put it in, take the lid off, and we're going to put our hand over the top. I don't know if you can see me. And we're going to put it in our hand and we're going to move that around in our hand very gently. What that's going to do is that's going to warm up that olive oil to our, our body heat temperature. That's going to help. And by having our hand over that, it's releasing those volatile oils that are a really important part of the first part of tasting olive oil in, in terms of we want to we want to get our nose in there and we want to smell what's going on there. So we're going to swirl that around in our hand and we're actually going to sniff our nose in there kind of get a, a big whiff of what we've what what's going on after that we're going to then take a little slurp of that olive oil and um, this is this is definitely not a place where you have to be concerned about and making any noises we want you to make noises we want you to slurp it um all of you're those things kind of that aerate that oil you're around you're in your mouth <laughs> yep. and almost think about chewing that olive oil that's going to bring in the oxygen that's going to make everything really come alive in your mouth and and this is the the most exciting part of uh tasting olive oil and hopefully again this is where you're going to start identifying some of these really wonderful nuances that are what make olive oil so exciting. This is one of those where all of those slurping noises that you made with your soup when you were a little kid and your mom sort of gave you side eye and, oh, don't do that. We don't yeah. do that at the table. It's not polite. That's exactly what we're going to do with our olive oils tonight when we taste them. Uh, if you prefer dipping bread, it is a way to get that oil from from the cup into your mouth um, but you just kind of keep in mind that you are going to get the flavors of the bread along with that so uh, you'll see Wendy and I just doing shots of olive oil which <laughs> uh, for better or worse is part of our job um, yeah. but uh, you're welcome to taste either way we do recommend tasting at least one of them with the slurping though Absolutely, absolutely and don't don't be afraid of it it's it's olive oil that's meant to be enjoyed um, and, and so one other thing is that uh, because of the freshness um, and the polyphenols in these olive oils, you might notice that you cough at the end of slurping olive oil. Again, that's a really, really good sign. That means you have some seriously fresh olive oil that uh, you, you need to guzzle. It's good stuff. <laughs> So Wendy, speaking of fresh, so we're talking about new harvest olive oils tonight, but what does that mean? Some of these are labeled with Novello. Uh, occasionally you get the Nuevo uh, from France, depending on the country. Um, mm -hmm. And we've even got one that's labeled the first day of pressing. Uh, so is it universal that this is new olive oil season or are these from a specific region? And what should we look for when we see things like Novello or New Harvest? Sure, yeah, absolutely. So these all, these four olive oils in particular um, were harvested uh, in late, um, late 2021, Northern Hemisphere uh, oils. And so uh, the, the novella and the new harvest and the first day all mean that as soon as they were picked, they didn't sit around. They went, the, the producers went right to business and, and started making this into olive oil. Now, of these four, we've got uh, the novella, which is the Tibertini. That um, indicates that when that was uh, picked and harvested, that this particular oil that's the first week of that harvest. Um, and so it's not a specific exact day where um, the Arbequina, the Castillo is actually listed as the first day. So that is actually that very first day when they went out to those olive groves and decided now's the time to pick. That's that actual olive oil. So that's a really also equally special olive oil. 
The other ones also are New Harvest, the labeled um, as the New Harvest. So again, this is the immediate, the very first harvest of those olives that have that came in from that grove and went right to uh, pressing. And again, when all these olive oils are picked, it, it is less than 24 hours before it's turned into olive oil. And again, that's one of the, um, the outstanding facts about extra virgin olive oil is that it does not sit around. And so a lot of these, uh, you mentioned Northern Hemisphere. So any of the Southern Hemisphere, we've gotten an oil from South Africa uh, mm. for a couple of years, things like that. Those would not be included in this tasting because they're not harvested right now, correct? Correct, correct. So those guys are actually in the same way that their winter is sort of peaks in July. Uh, their harvest is usually June and July every year. So about six months after uh, the yeah. Northern Hemisphere. Which could be another interesting class maybe we'll have eventually. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. So we've talked a little bit about uh, the Novello. And so one thing I want to point out is especially the We the Legend. So this is actually, they harvest throughout the, the fall season. So these guys actually start in October. Uh, and they go all the way through late November, early December. And this is not in that Novello category. This is just the fresh harvest. So we don't know when during the season the, the We the Legend is from, but mm -hmm. it is from the harvest that just happened uh, at the end of 2021. Mm -hmm. Usually those like the Novello and the Nuevo, those will indicate that like first week or the first days of, of the pressing. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, with that said, Wendy, let's dive right into the first oil uh, so that we can talk in slightly more concrete terms about some of sure. them uh, as opposed to somewhat abstract. Absolutely. All right. So. And for the folks who are tasting along with us at home, the tasting sheet that was in your kit that's the order that we're gonna be going in. So we're gonna start with the Tiburtini Novello. So hopefully everybody can follow along and um, do what we're doing and um, give us some feedback too. Okay, I'm putting mine in my hand. I have the lid off. Again, this is a beautiful fresh olive oil. That color is awesome, Wendy. Is, is there it? anything? Uh, that we should be looking for in color? Is color something that's generally an indicator? In you know, that's situations? a good question. Um, it, it's not necessarily a, a, an indicator in terms of um, for scoring purposes or for um, judging purposes. Um, I, I can tell you, I know um, from when I poured these to, to seeing them now, um, they still have this beautiful bright, golden and green vibrancy to them. And again, this is an indicator of the, the freshness of these. Okay, so I'm gonna stick my nose in here. Mm. I'm thinking about what I'm smelling. I know what I'm smelling, but again, for you at home who this might be the first time you're sticking your nose in a, a beautiful cup of fresh olive oil, um, there's no right or wrong answer. So um, there's definitely gonna be some fruitiness or floralness. They get kind of grassy bananas on the nose to this one. Mm -hmm. I'm getting this really nice, delicate floral aroma almost that's going on that's lending into, after tasting this, to a very nice sweetness that I get on my immediate mouthfeel. There's a beautiful creaminess to this olive oil that again, what I taste and smell might not be exactly what you taste and smell, but that sweetness goes into this beautiful creamy mouthfeel and a creaminess that reminds me of a, a dessert-like olive oil. But now I'm also getting some heat on the back of my, on the back of my throat. 
And I hope everybody else is getting that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the for me, so like you expect olive oil to be like that. I'm going to use oily for lack of a better word. Like mm. it is, it's a liquid fat. So you expect it to sort of have that heaviness, but this mm -hmm. kind of goes one step beyond that for me. It does, it's got that really almost a roundness to the mouthfeel. Yeah. Roundness is a really good word. And again, um, I don't want people to be afraid to, to, to take a gulp of this olive oil. I want, I want to encourage people to do that. Um, again, it's not, there's nothing heavy about this, the, the mouthfeel to this. It's, it's mm -hmm. very clean and very light as well. Um, and, and, and so the, um, Overall, it's a really well balanced olive oil. It's got fruitiness on the, and floral on the nose, mm -hmm. um, the creaminess and the sweetness that I taste on the immediate mouthfeel. Um, and again, there's a slight pepper at the end, maybe a little tightness on my throat that is um, more like a, a white pepper, I would say, in terms of if mm -hmm. you had all your peppercorns that you could start cracking, white pepper <laughs> seems to be a more delicate. Uh, pepper, which is not to say that it's delicate <laughs> when you crack that fresh, but it has this really great peppery heat there on the end. Again, really well balanced. Yeah. Now, Wendy, this is a Tuscan olive oil, if I'm remembering correctly. Yes. This is Tivoli is where it's from. Um, I believe. I, I think should have looked at a map of Italy. Geography yeah, is not the best. The Panaretta, I think, is um, the next one we're going to taste is definitely is near Tuscan. Tuscany. I think that one. I was yeah, going to say one of the cool things that I do know about Tabertini, of our Tuscan varietals, um, is that it's a single estate and they still hand harvest. So if you look at the front of their bottle and you can sort of see it even in the picture that I included on the tasting sheet, uh, there's the red olive rake that oh, they yeah. include because they do hand harvest for their Novello. So they take, it looks sort of like a handheld garden rake, but they use that to rake down the, the branch of the olive tree and that loosens up all of the ripe olives. Um, but it's gentle enough that if things aren't as ripe as they want them to be, they actually stay on the tree. So mm. it's, you lay out big sheets and then you go up on a ladder and hand rake <laughs> yeah. these trees. And it's a little bit like raking leaves in, in Michigan in the fall, cause you just sort of get it all done at once, but then they gather up all the olives and they go to the mill from there. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah, a, that a cool process. It is a very cool process and I'm glad you brought that up. That's a really nice point to keep that in mind because that's part of the care and love that goes into this olive oil production. Um, and so uh, that's a really good way to keep the, the first way to start keeping the olive in a really good um, healthy state prior to being uh, produced into olive oil. Yeah. All right. Sorry, I ran out of water. <laughs> there we go. Cool. What a, does anybody else uh, taste anything? I mean, Wendy and I were sort of giving you our impressions as we went along. But like I said, we're a small group. This can be a really interactive and conversational uh, evening. So chime in with if you like this one, if you don't. Uh, Dana has a question in the chat of what do we recommend this for? So we, we should probably include all of our favorite things to uh, do with these olive oils too. Yeah. So uh, I would, uh, for me personally, because I love olive oil and try to use it. I, in fact, I do use it every day. Again, the Tibertini, uh, again, on my first nose and my first taste, I have a sweetness and a, um, a, a floralness going on. I highly recommend it on a cream-based dessert, like a panna cotta, um, vanilla, gelato. vanilla gelato. I'm telling you what, you will not believe how incredible that is. It, th there's something about the creaminess of like a panna cotta complemented with that olive oil. It's amazing, absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. 
Yeah, I can, I could also see this going really well with other sweet things too. So, uh, you know, drizzled over some seared peaches, you know, I, Ooh. I have my grill out Ooh. already as a good Michigan, <laughs> 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 but, you know, uh, even like melons and things, which are still somewhat in season, some grilled melon, just yeah. enough of a char on that and then drizzled uh, this over the top. Uh, yeah. I also, so I had a little bit of this uh, from a previous sampling that I did and I dropped a little bit in my smoothie the other morning and Ooh. it was really nice and that sort of creamy dessert, but this was uh, with uh, fresh cherries and a little bit of maple yogurt, uh, wow. blended that, that really great. nice mouthfeel to it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. How about anybody else? Has anybody else had any comments or any questions about, you know, the, the tasting wheel? Is that, that, is that being a, a helpful resource right now or, um, uh, Anne chimes in with definitely got the fruity and dessert like notes in the chat. Good. Good. Uh, and Susie said, love it. I wrote down smooth and banana. Oh, wonderful. Oh, yeah. Now, see, that's a great answer. Definitely. Um, again, just because what we say, this is just our own tasting. There's no right or wrong answer. Ultimately, we want it. So we want you to be able to identify what you like about olive oils. We want to see you come into the deli and, and, and buy olive oil and use it, guzzle it up. <laughs> and so I just good? on the tasting wheel side, um, because it is one of those things, it's, it's a guide. It's not like you must pick out four things from this wheel for this olive oil, for it to be the right answer. Um, you know, it, it helps. I find it useful because you get those, oh, well, it's kind of like a fruity thing, but I can't quite pinpoint and having it in front of you. I think the wheel helps like, oh, it's not just fruity. It's that guava or banana, it leads you down that thoughts of what various flavors you're, you're tasting. Uh, Susie, that came, it's the second thing stapled to your class sheet. The, the tasting sheet should have had a tasting wheel as, as, as a second page. Thank you, they stuck together, thank you. No worries. Okay. I was about to say, I stapled them all personally. So if I managed to staple two <laughs> tasting sheets, that was totally going to be within my uh, brain this week. So. When, Wendy, this is, um, I, I tasted wood initially and then, and then I, I can definitely taste the banana having tasted it again. Does the tasting wheel, is it similar to a wine one from the standpoint of the flavors that are used or is, do they differ in any way? Uh, great question. So, you know, I don't know a wine tasting wheel as well as I know an olive oil tasting wheel. So um, I will tell you though, that on this tasting wheel in particular, you'll see a lot of positive traits. There's also some defects they call them in olive oil tasting. So we're not gonna be talking about any of those today. Um, but again, the, these are things in olive oil that uh, are predominant forward notes. So you generally will have grassiness or um, this freshness. You'll have fruitiness. You'll also have pungency, uh, which are th these three things are the key elements to tasting and scoring olive oil. So again, the tactile section that you see in red, those are those, they're, those are good notes, but again, those are the things that um, you'll taste kind of on the end um, mm -hmm. that kind of hit the back of your throat. Um, those are the polyphenols and the olive oils that do that. Um, and again, you'll see um, like green and herb and fruitiness fragrance also. Um, so does that help answer your question? Yeah, I, th I, th I think, yes. I think the, the taste flavors seem to be similar in many respects, but differ in, in a subtle way. Mm -hmm. I think you went, mm -hmm. My wife was quite correct. There's, there's a lot more berry flavors maybe on the wine side than you see on, a, on an olive mm -hmm. oil side. Okay. And so, yeah, that they probably have similar characteristics, but not exactly the same. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, we've seen a lot of the industry sort of embrace this concept of a tasting wheel to help define um, sort of flavors and give people tools while they're tasting. So I've seen them for wine, for whiskey, olive oil. Uh, we use one for cheese in some of our cheese classes. And they're all sort of in the same mindset of giving you the range of flavors, both good and bad, because a lot of them include those defect flavors as well. Um, but like you were saying, Jeremy, they're going to depend a little bit on what they're designed for. So uh, an olive oil wheel won't necessarily have the same flavor profiles as say a chocolate wheel uh, will just because of the difference in expected profiles. Uh, so Wendy, we have a question in the chat. How long do these stay fresh? Not long. <laughs> Once they're open, I want you to guzzle them up. I just can't stress that enough. That they are alive and immediate and um, sensational. They, these, in particular, these new olive oils should get e eaten up. Um, as soon as you crack open a bottle of any olive oil, you've introduced oxygen. Oxidation is going to start happening. Now, that's not going to necessarily ruin your bottle of olive oil if you don't use it up within, you know, two months or three weeks or whatever, but your flavors and your profiles will start to soften and um, become a little bit more relaxed or delicate, I guess, um, instead of that immediate vibrancy. Um, so I would recommend use it up within a couple months. Um, I don't know, what do you, what would you say to that, Tessie? Yeah, I mean, so at the, the deli and in general, we say that olive oil has about a two-year shelf life overall. Mm -hmm. um, and that's from when it's bottled until when you would want to use it. But that's in an unopened state, in yeah. a cool place that's out of direct sunlight. Uh, so, you know, a pantry cupboard towards the back is a great place to store it. Um, heat and light and then oxygen are going to be the three things that are going to have a big impact on that shelf life uh, overall. But I agree, uh, once you open these bottles, really getting through them in three, maybe four months at most is probably what I would recommend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shall we uh, jump to our next oil here? Yes, we should. This one is fun. The, so the estate uh, that this comes from is about an hour south of Florence. And the centerpiece of that estate is the castle, which is actually what the oil is named after. Um, and the castle itself is over a thousand years old. Uh, so, you know, we tend to think of here in the States, a hundred years being a long time. Uh, this is a place where they have had olives and olive oil for over a thousand years, uh, which yeah. is really cool. And it's pretty impressive to see those uh, olive trees and those olive groves at that point as well. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this one is a blend. So we have, I think, three varietals in this one, Wendy. Yes, we do. Uh, the Morello, the Lucino, and Frantoyo olives. Um, They're all pretty classic Tuscan. Mm. varietals. Mm -hmm. All right. And this is a new harvest. Yep. So yeah, so this isn't necessarily from that like first couple of days or the first week or anything. This is just this year's pressing, but because it's, a, it's brand new off the presses, basically it's, it's in this nice fresh category. And I want to remind everybody, make sure that you've taken a sip of water or if you've had your, your, your bit of bread to kind of cleanse your palate. This is really important. Also, make sure um, if you had gotten oil from the first sample on your hands, give your hands a good wipe too. This is a lot greener. Mm, mm -hmm. mm. To me, this has more of a fruity nose to it than a floral nose. Mm -hmm. mm. <clears throat> oh, 
Oh, that <laughs> one's got a kick. Huh? This is good. This is really good. <laughs> okay, I hope everybody else is having as much fun as Tessie and I are having right now with this. This is wonderful, <laughs> amazing oil. Really fruity up front on my nose. Even silky uh, when I first taste mm -hmm. it, which is wonderful. And to me, this immediately takes me, um, it reminds me of parsley almost. Uh, there's a, a yeah. parsley brightness to this, almost if you've chewed mm -hmm. on parsley, you, a bitterness, but a really delicious bitterness in a way that opens up into this, these really fresh greens, like uh, radish, uh, arugula. I, I was going to say arugula and like fresh baby kale that gets that little ooh, bit spicy. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It kind of has a little bit of that uh, tightness, um, mm -hmm. almost like a tannin uh, in, a, in a sense that lends to a little tightness in your mouth, not on the back of your throat, but- No, it's up here. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it's persistent. This is yeah. lasting. I've had one slurp of this, but it's still there. And this is a really wonderful feature about great olive oil as well. Yeah, that, that greenness and really that like arugula baby kale spiciness <laughs> is what's persisting for me. Like I, I've also only had the one slurp and just even talking through it, like I still have all of that going on on my palate, yeah. which is just yep. this nice long lasting finish. It, you know, some oils like you get a bit of pepper and then it's done this, it just, it's continuing to go and continuing to have some staying power, which is really nice. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And again, really silky mouthfeel. So if, if you, if you were able to take a slurp of the olive oil versus taking a, a piece of your bread and dip it in there, um, the silkiness is really very clean, very, it's thin. Mm -hmm. So you have no oily feeling going on in your mouth. Uh, so Ari actually just wrote this one up in his uh, mm. five foods or five <clears throat> things email this week. Um, and he noted some almond and nectarine mm. flavors. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I get, I get the nectarine as clearly in the, the nose. I, I definitely can. Mm -hmm. um, but they, he, he also had the, the green and arugula with some red oh. pepper heat on the finish. Oh, nice. And that's a really good example, Tessie, of, of what another person thinks, you know, what they're tasting and what they smell on this. Again, there's no right or wrong answers. Right. But yeah, this definitely is a persistent uh, olive oil. Again, balanced with the fruitiness mm -hmm. on the nose, wonderful mouthfeel. This is alive. Yeah. This is why we want to guzzle this up. <laughs> and this for me, so, you know, we talked about the sweet le leanings of the Novello. This for me, I want all the vegetables. So like oh, yeah, yeah. those nice spring greens, but like with roasted radishes, mm, mm -hmm. with, which give you that sort of sweet crunch. And then uh, I bet we're probably only about a month out from fresh peas, like fresh Ooh. shell peas. Oh, that'd be so beautiful. It's just like straight out of the garden with a little <laughs> bit of this and, and maybe some, you know, herbs grated over the top. Uh, oh. you know, if you really want to gild the lily, you could put some nice pecorino on that. I was just going to say, yes, maybe some Parmesan, just fret, just a couple, yep. like just nice chunks of it there. And just, yeah, smash that whole bowl of all of that yumminess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ari's suggestion was to take some, uh, good toast and make a bruschetta with this mm. one, just brush it on with, with that nicely toasted bread, which again, kind of the cool thing about olive oil is depending on how you apply it, you're going to get different experiences. So something sure. like the fresh peas and roasted radishes and a salad, you're going to apply to mostly a cold dish. So you're going to get a lot of the same flavors that we're getting right now. If you brush this on hot toast, like right as it comes off the grill or out of the oh, toaster, it's, yeah. it's going to open up that oil in a different way. And that heat, yeah. even just the subtle heat of a toast 
will, yeah. will give you a whole different experience with that oil. Right, right. That's a very good point. And again, back to our first olive oil that we suggested putting it on a panna cotta or even gelato, keeping that in mind. Um, but it's still, again, it's still really going to shine through and be a wonderful um, oil for that. But yeah, heat, whatever the dish is. So if you're putting this on a cold salad, if you're putting this on grilled fish, things like that, keeping that in mind, it's still going to uh, be fantastic. Yeah. And so that's a good point though, too, Wendy. So a lot of times, you know, people ask us, what do I do with the, the oil? Uh -huh. And a lot of times they're looking at things that they're cooking with, et cetera. Um, but these are all oils that I don't think either of us are going to recommend cooking with properly. Good point. Or using for like finishing dishes. So you mentioned fish and I'm just thinking like, a really nice, uh, the white fish season up on Lake Superior just opened mm -hmm. up again as the ice has started mm -hmm. to break. Mm -hmm. You know, a really nice, uh, even just broiled white fish filet with some of this drizzled on after it comes off the broiler. Yeah. Uh, I think would be a really fun presentation for this one. Absolutely, absolutely. And I fully agree. I would definitely use these for finishing uh, oils only. Um, the, these oils have so much going on. And again, we want to encourage people to learn more about what they like in olive oils and, the, and tasting those nuances where, um, you know, we encourage people to make things like vinaigrettes and, and cook with olive oil and things like that. But these in particular, these are a really great way to get to know identifying factors of what you really like about your olive oil. So when you come into the deli and you want to try new olive oils or you have an interest in a specific flavor now that you're learning about this, we can even recommend even more of those to go along with that. But again, with these, you could take one of these olive oils and you, you could have a complete springtime meal with a cold salad with fresh greens and your grilled fish and your creamy panna cotta dessert. You could put one, one of these olive oils on all three of those temperature different dishes, and you're going to have a fantastic addition to each of those dishes. And this oil is going to take on a life of its own in each dish. Yeah. All right. Well, we've spent our first two samples in Italy. Are we mm -hmm. ready to uh, jet set over to Spain? <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Let's go. All right. <laughs> We the Legend Excellent. is up next. We the Legend. Yes, and this is a new harvest and this is a Picol olive. Yep, we had two different olives from them, the Picol and the uh, Hoji Blanca are the, mm -hmm. and we get, they're bottled separately. Um, mm -hmm. So they're just the single oil or single olive varietal for each oil, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this, um, this one also, if you notice the color of this one, this is just getting to be a little bit warmer, kind of greenish color, which is a really nice uh, note, again, to a super fresh olive oil. So these guys are a relatively new addition to our lineup. Um, so we, the legend, uh, actually our tea buyer, Jackson, uh, is the one who initially connected with them. Uh, mm -hmm. He took advantage of one of our staff scholarship programs here uh, at the deli, and he went and visited some of our Spanish producers, including mm -hmm. cheese makers and jamón makers. And while he was over there, he actually uh, got to tour the olive grove with these guys. Mm -hmm. uh, Darren is their uh, lead sort of uh, pr production head for olive mm -hmm. oil. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I always find really cool about We the Legend is that they harvest with the moon cycles. Okay. So they actually wait until it's the new moon to start harvesting their oils mm -hmm. because they that's the height. And it, it's, it's a little woo, but it's also <laughs> one of those things that has some scientific backing because yeah. both tides change with the, the cycles of the moon. Uh, at the new moon, that's when the olives retain the most moisture. Mm -hmm. And so the oil content is a little bit higher at the new moon than at the full moon. So mm -hmm. they, they time their harvest 
to go along with that, which I, it, it's, it just shows you like the level of detail that these people yeah. are putting into their oils, which seems like it should be, it's a single ingredient in all of these that we're tasting. There's no yep. adjuncts or preservatives. It's just olives that are crushed and pressed, but the amount of care that goes into a single thing to make an olive oil is really yeah. And again, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. This is exactly why this is a perfect example of, of why we have this olive oil at Zingerman's. This is part of what we want to represent and what we believe in, in really good, great food. And again, for the idea that you're harvesting olives uh, at, under the full moon. I mean, who doesn't want to do that, right? And how can you not say there's not extra love that's gone into this bottle of olive oil? So right, right. Um, yeah, so this is really a really great, exciting olive oil. Now again, folks, keep in mind as, we, as we're tasting these olive oils, we put them in a specific order that we feel it's, they're gonna, the, the flavor profiles are gonna get a little bit more intense. So again, if you haven't slurped an olive oil yet and you're thinking about it, you're just not sure, I'm gonna encourage you to do this. <laughs> It's absolutely worth this intensity. This one is very grassy up front. My nose is just, yeah. I am out at the farm cutting hay, trimming greens. This is very, very alive with the nose. You get a little bit of that green tomato character, both. I was going to say tomato nose. leaf. Yeah. yeah, the tomato leaf in the nose. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, it's that walking through that height of July garden where oh, you like yes. accidentally brush up against the little <laughs> tomatoes and yep. that aromatic explosion. Mm. Uh, Sharon has a question in the chat. What does it mean when they say an olive oil is balanced? That's an excellent question. Great question. So for me, balanced, what I've learned and what I know is balanced means we think about the, the fruitiness on the nose. So the scent, we think about the mouthfeel and this, um, the freshness, which can also be uh, bitterness, but bitterness in a good way. We talked about parsley as one of those qualities. Um, and then also at the end, there's this assertiveness, there's this pungency, which is the heat. Um, when you have those three factors all kind of on that same plane, that's, Mm -hmm. That's what I know as, as a balanced olive oil. Um, it's, it's, I would call it a crowd pleaser kind of olive oil. So it's something where everybody's going to um, agree that there's nothing overly pungent about it. There's nothing overly floral about it. Again, we've got these three really nice factors that we identify in olive oil and they're even throughout. Why, Wendy, does it does the heat hit the back of the throat at the end? Do, do you know what's happening there? <laughs> so I know that it's the polyphenols and the olives that represent the freshness. And, and what they're doing is there's just, um, that's hitting the, the back of the throat that's opening up. Um, and that's where we feel that on the back of our, the back mm -hmm. of our throat. So again, it's, it's that sensation of tightness or pepper and it mm -hmm. makes you want to cough it almost kind of comes up to to your nasal passages as well yeah because you'd expect to 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 taste it right in the first three or four seconds and you don't yeah right? that, so that's just... a really interesting point yeah that's true and again um the, i what i know is that it's these polyphenols that um are are giving it that that punch. And again, we get that on the back of our throat. Back. Okay, thank you. JG says in the chat, tobacco. And I can totally see that mm -hmm. in, in the nose and in the flavor. This has got a lot of spice to it. This is really spicy. So again, for me, I'm getting that tomato leaf up front, just that, mm -hmm. that nose, but it's mm -hmm. also lending into what I know from picking tomatoes, that kind of, that scent and that um, that full on brightness or bitterness that kind of goes along with that. Mm -hmm. I also am getting on the, the, the back of my tongue, 
not quite on my throat yet, but almost like a warm cinnamon. Like it's a very, yeah. Um, mustard greens even. Mustard greens are more maybe on the back of my throat, but kind of in the middle of this tasting, this like this warm cinnamon that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's both that little bit of spice that you expect from cinnamon, but also a dryness. Yeah. Like never accidentally like made cinnamon rolls and there was more cinnamon <laughs> than sugar in there. <laughs> yes, exactly. I cook with a seven-year-old a lot. So, uh, <laughs> consistency is not always our, our strong suit yet. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's that sort of dryness of the cinnamon on your right. palate. And I think of that too as like tannins almost. Like if you've ever had a really strong cup of black tea that's maybe been oversteeped or you forgot, you know, you forgot about it and had it later on or something. It, it that tightness again, like you're talking about. Yeah. It's almost like a it almost dries your mouth or maybe makes your mouth water in a sense. Mm -hmm. But again, this is a really complex um olive oil. Yeah. Uh, for what we've got going here. Susie, I saw you unmute and we kept talking. I, know, I, keep, I, keep, I keep muting and unmuting and because then I listen and then I mute when I listen. <laughs> so I have a question about when you say you feel it at the back of your mouth, because on this one, it's not going anywhere near the back of my mouth. It's on the back of my tongue. I love the cinnamon mm -hmm. idea. Uh -huh. um, the one before it was definitely in the back of the throat. So is that just personal difference and, and what your taste buds are or do if you say back of the tongue are most of the people sensing it on the back of their tongue or some sensing it at the front or the back of their throat really good question and thank you for asking that so um for me when i say the back of my mouth it's like the back of my tongue so i think about when i'm tasting i think about the immediate, the tip of my tongue, I think about the middle of my tongue, and I think about the back of my tongue, knowing I've got all these taste buds going on on my tongue all over. So um, I really try to pay attention to, as I slurp and taste these olive oils, what it is that I am tasting. And sometimes I have to slurp and taste them several times in a row mm -hmm. to just make myself stop and think about the, the taste that I'm looking for or the the immediate taste or that mid taste or what again was it that I tasted on the end. Um, this again is just this, this is fun for me to be able to identify all these and to come up with what I think I'm tasting. So um, hopefully that helps answer your question in terms of what you now yeah. are tasting and how you're learning yeah. to taste those things. That, that, that helps a lot. Um, my problem was the, the one that we tasted before, mm -hmm. the number two, Okay. I couldn't stand it at the beginning. It was so bitter. I just like, okay. I'm sorry. I, I'm, env <laughs> I'm envying your experience, but it was like, Ugh. and then the finish afterward, I loved. Yeah. Oh, good. Just, just the opposite happened with this one that we're tasting now. Okay. I really enjoyed green tomato was what I thought. Uh -huh. I can't stand how my mouth feels right now. I want the finish <laughs> of the other one. So I'm a problem. <laughs> this is, this no, is really interesting. Though, this is, yeah. Yeah. That's really good. I mean, for you to be able to identify those things so immediate on this, this that's fantastic. And we're going to help you find olive oils that you really love. And you've already identified things that you are interested in and what you're looking for. So again, like we said before, when you come into the deli now and you want to taste some specific olive oils and you know that you like this persistence on the end of an olive oil, we're going to be able to have you sample and taste more of those olive oils that have that, what we feel have that nuance to it. And again, when we have you taste these, your answer is the right answer. You might not taste what we taste. And again, that's why we do sample those out for you. Yeah. I think too, this one was fun because it actually changed over time where like for me, number two, it, it sort of persisted but it didn't mm -hmm. change. It was the, the same sensations for me through, mm -hmm. through that really long finish. This one, you got all of that green tomato and then that sort of cinnamon dryness. But then after the, the red pepper faded at the back of my throat, it crept back up. And now <laughs> like I can feel the tingle still along yeah. the side yeah, that's of right. my tongue. 
Yeah. But it took it a little bit for that to kick in. So, you know, it's, it, it, these are like, we've said a couple times, they're living things, but even throughout a, a, a tasting session, like they're going to change front to finish middle, that sort of thing and identifying and tasting along and figuring out what you like in the various oils. Like Wendy said, it just helps us dial in like, what are, what is your best olive oil for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say, I just have a quick note on, on the tasting. Um, I recall when I was doing my training for this, um, we were, we were told to basically not eat anything with any type of spice, any type of anything that could ultimately affect our taste buds. And so we went several, several days eating very bland food. Um, <laughs> but again, this is one of those things where um, if you, depending on what you've eaten before this, we also uh, were trained and we learned a lot about tasting and identifying defects in olive oils first thing in the morning. Apparently that's when your taste buds are at their height. And so, you know, this is also an interesting class potential. Like what, what do these taste like first thing in the morning? I'm going to tell you what folks, I'm going to have my oils here on my counter tomorrow morning and I'm going to taste them in the morning and see if they're any different. <laughs> there we go. All right. Uh, we have one left. And speaking of first thing in the morning, uh, this is sort of like the first thing in the morning for the <laughs> olive oil harvest. Our next one is specifically the first day of pressing from Castillo mm -hmm. de Canena. Yes, this is the Arbequina, the Castillo Arbequina olive oil, um, single varietal from Spain. And so these olives, if you've ever seen an Arbequina olives, because these are... Uh, done as a table olive as well. So you see them a lot in like Spanish olive blends. They're a really little olive. They're a kind of the size of a chickpea usually, I'm going to say. They're yeah, that's a good not, representation like, of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they have a relatively small amount of flesh compared to the pit. So they're <laughs> this, this little flavor powerhouse um of an of an olive uh sharon asks what do we use oil number three on what what are some of your top uh uses what was that again that, i didn't hear that the the we the legend that we just tasted what are we uh -huh. using that on what do we would use that on good question so again that olive oil is just alive and it, it's got so much going on so again as a finishing olive oil i think and tessie you tell me Maybe I might put it on a more mild, um, a mild dish, just so I can really have those nuances shine through on that. So yeah, I, about like beans even, you know, mm -hmm. like some white beans um, with that, maybe cook up some white beans, smush it on some really nice toast or bread, drizzle on some of that olive oil, maybe a little yeah. touch of sea salt because I've got such a salt tooth, but you know, <laughs> just something like that where it really is gonna shine through. Again, or even avocado, something right. that's um, a really good medium to, you know, uh, hold that flavor. Yeah, I, I was thinking of like the um, Ortiz tunas that we Ooh. get uh, oh, yeah. that are packed in oil. Drain those off with, again, some, you know, white beans, or I, I was even thinking like a couple chunks of manchego sort of tapas style. Mm. Mm -hmm. and just drizzle that guy over there. Something with a little bit more meatiness, I think would stand up to the- Sure, the right, because it has that aggressiveness to it. Yeah. yeah, for sure. All right, so oil number four. Mm. I get a really, I'm, it's, a, it's a word that I think sometimes get over, gets overused, but it's a very olivey character on the nose mm -hmm. of this. It's definitely um, a, a, a grassy kind of um, freshness uh, uh, on the immediate nose. A strong, a, a strong grassiness, almost after, you know, a rain and then and then you have this grass cut. Yeah, I don't know whether it was just me, but a walnutty flavor to it. Mm -hmm. What's With that? 
it was a sort of a walnuty flavor to it. Mm. But the, uh, the after effects on the mouth was it felt very dry, dried the mm. mouth out. We've got a wow, this one is amazing. Uh, and Susie chimes in with yummy for this one. So this one, again, <laughs> this is really great. They're all really great, but this one's really great. This is like I'm in a, a, field, a, a hot, sunny field with all these fresh herbs and I'm just walking on them. And there's, there's mm. so much going on in terms of that all over my entire mouth with these fresh herbs. Um, they're really wide, they're really open. And I really love that about this. Lots um, of heat in this one. Like yeah. I, it's almost, it's almost coating my entire tongue with, yeah. the heat, which is great, but it's like, it's like eating spicy chili, not uh -huh. like a, a peppercorn necessarily. It's got that kind of mouth coating intensity on this one. Absolutely. And again, I have that same sensation like you had on the, uh, the last olive oil. I can feel this heat kind of creeping back in and now kind of developing and um, warming up. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and again, this is, this is speaking of the intensity and the freshness of this olive oil for that. This is a really good version of what it means to have an olive oil that's alive. Just again, you, it's meant to be guzzled. Slurp it up, take shots, do whatever you want. Enjoy it. Yeah. I was going to say, so on that note, what are we doing with this one, Wendy? What's your, yeah. what's your go-to? Hmm. I think with this, again, I like the idea of uh, beans or a, a, a mild type protein that um, really lets this shine through. So I, I tend to stay away from, when I have these really super fresh olive oils like this, I tend to stay away from things like garlic or a really strong fresh onion, because again, those are very, very powerful and potent. And I want the potency in this olive oil to shine through. So again, if I'm gonna have some beans um, or uh, a, a fish like tuna even, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe just grilled or seared, um, having this to go with that. This also is a really interesting oil where, again, I like, you know, I, I sometimes just take a snack and have a slice of bread and just dip my, dip my bread in that just because I crave this, this sensation and this flavor of this olive oil. I yeah. think olive oil is definitely one of my main food groups. So, <laughs> um, the other thing that's really interesting, you know, we talked about olive oils that, uh, have a sweetness to them that can, that can be, um, used for a dessert. I would encourage folks, hopefully you have enough of this olive oil left over that be brave, try it out. Take a little spoonful of, you know, something that has a sweet creaminess to it. If, it, if it's a creamy yogurt or a custard or a panna cotta, and just put a little drizzle, just put a dot or two of this on that, on a single spoonful and try it. You're really, really gonna be amazed in terms of how this um, goes along and really complements that, that sweetness and that creaminess. It's a really fun um, way to have your olive oil. So this also, I'd stir it into a bowl of yogurt. Maybe I'd put it in with some granola that, you know, it's that kind of um, intensity that kind of would actually complement those sweetnesses. Yeah. I was going to say, and as I was sipping this one, uh, I was thinking that this would be really nice in like a really simple pasta. Mm. So like a, a long, something long and thin, like a spaghetti or a spaghettini with mm -hmm. this and then you know really simple flavor maybe some manchego or some parm grated over the top yeah uh, to give it a little bit of a, a a cheesy lift but really that would be all you'd want like yeah that, it's a three ingredient super simple <laughs> evening meal kind of thing where you don't right. have to put a lot of effort into it but if you use those really good really intense flavor of ingredients in terms of the the oil and the cheese, it's, you don't need more than that. That's true. That's a really good point. And again, that speaks to volumes to the quality of these, these items that we have. And so again, even though it's just olive oil, it's just the simple ingredient, 
it is the backbone to so it, it's the backbone to everything that's wonderful that you're eating. So again, I want to encourage folks to use olive oil with their dinners, but use it at breakfast, use it at lunch, figure out ways to incorporate it and just don't be afraid. Try a little bite of something, put a drop of this olive oil on it, put a spoonful of it on there. You know, you might really be surprised and it's going to help you um, use these olive oils in ways you didn't think that you could use them. And they're really fantastic. So mm -hmm. it, it's going to be a really nice addition to uh, cooking and, and eating and enjoying your food. Totally. All right, folks. So that's officially time, but Wendy and I are going to stick around if you have more questions, a little bit of housekeeping before I truly let you go. Uh, you all have your discount code um, in your reminder email that went out a couple of days ago. We're going to send a follow-up email in about 20 minutes that'll have the recording of tonight's class as well as a reminder of that discount code. Um, so all of the oils that we tasted today are available in the deli right now. I will say this last one, the, the first day of harvest, we probably only have about 20 bottles left. Uh, it's one that because it's only a single day's pressing, we don't get a huge number of every year. Um, and so that one, I know that we're a little, uh, starting to come a little short on, uh, similarly with the Novello, the very first one that we tasted, uh, those are again, because they're the very first ones pressed, uh, from those estates, they don't, we don't get as much of them as some of the others. Uh, and then the, we, the legend, that third one that we tasted, I have two options up on our grocery site right now. Uh, the first is on sale. That's last year's harvest. So the 2020 harvest, it's got another year or so uh, of kind of viability. Like we said, about two years from pressing is what we give olive oils in general as a shelf life. So you still have time to use it. It's not going to be as intense as this one. Um, and then the one that isn't on sale is uh, the, the new one. So we're in the midst of our olive oil sale right now. So there's some uh, screaming deals on all of those 2020 harvests and your 20% coupon does stack on those sales. Uh, so if you need some, some good pantry oil, and then uh, these guys are all available too if you want one of those uh, sort of new harvest, nice peppery intense oils to, to play with. Uh, whether it's one that we tasted here, or I know we've got three or four others that have landed and are on the shelf that we didn't taste in today's class. Dana and Anne, thank you both for coming. We've got some thank yous coming in through the chat here. I'm going to thank you in person. Woo <laughs> Woo I, but I do have I do have one other question since you're willing to stay. Yeah. Um, it's it's the taste of bitter. Now, what I what I don't understand is when someone says it tastes bitter, like two of them were really bitter to me. One and four were not. Mm -hmm. But the two middle ones, either at the finish or in the initial slurp, I tasted bitter. I don't like bitter. Does, am I tasting it different than someone else who does like it? Or is it just that someone else likes bitter and I just haven't been exposed to bitter all that much. So I don't know if it's actually the taste buds that are different or the experience uh, being used to something. Um, so some people like bitter. I, I just don't know. I, right now, I don't like bitter, but... <laughs> Well, Susie, I'll, I'll pipe in on that. And my, okay. here's my two cents on that. So what you like is the right answer. So True. if you don't yeah. like bitter, then, then okay. When you come into the deli and we help you find some olive oils, right. that's really great for us to know. And you know that. Bitter is considered a positive attribute in terms of uh, olive oil in general. It's that assertiveness. Um, uh, but it also, uh, I think bitter is a, we always, most people associate that with a negative in terms of food tasting, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so one of the examples I used for one of the um, earlier ones with the bitterness to it, well, I think I said parsley. 
So if you've ever just chewed on a chunk of parsley, you know, it, it has a bitterness to it, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, at least for me, it does. Um, but again, I, I, I guess I want to say that your, your idea of what you taste, if you don't yeah. like that bitterness, that's okay. We'll find you other olive yeah. oils that, that well, don't. What I'm wondering, what I'm wondering is more philosophical probably than that. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, or experiential. Mm -hmm. is do people move for, am I still in my child like bleh, bleh. but then <laughs> you give a child you know they have a beet and they go bleh. well 20 years later they're growing beets in their yard and they love them so I'm wondering if I open my mind and I will still taste the same taste sensation but I will appreciate it more if I mature in my attitude <laughs> I don't know well, that's, that's interesting that you put that in a very good way, because again, you know, don't we all always want to just learn new things and continue yeah. to grow and to yeah. continue yeah. to try things. So I appreciate that you say that and that you put it in that regard, because I, again, from, from what I know of olive oils and what I've learned and continue to learn, bitterness is a positive attribute. It's okay. something we want to encourage folks to okay. wrap their head around. I'd like to find a different way of saying bitterness. So again, um, freshness or um, it's not spicy. It's it's one yeah. of those, things that, you know, if yeah. I could have a, a, a wider range of what that is and make it sound more approachable. Well, no, both of you helped because you were talking about picking up a bunch of parsley or in the garden or fresh this or fresh that. And I was like, oh, really? Oh, I mean, it, it just sort of helped my experience because mm -hmm. I think I'm still in the children's books where, where you have bitter and sweet. Yeah. You have yeah. good and evil. Sure. You, know, you have love <laughs> and hate. Well, I'm at a transition point in my life where all of these things need to merge. I can cry and laugh at the same time. Mm -hmm. So perhaps I can learn to taste bitter and enjoy it rather than having it be, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. you know what? I'm going to challenge you to taste, taste these oils again. Okay. But taste in the morning. Something. In the morning. Yeah. Oh. In the morning. Absolutely. And taste it with something creamy. Taste it with, okay. uh, you know, get a scoop of vanilla gelato. I want you to get something that has that yeah. little bit of sweetness, but okay. you know, that creaminess. It's really going to make an amazing change to that olive oil oh. and, and try it and see. And it, I'd okay. be curious know what you think about that it's yeah. a whole world out there right <laughs> it's it's so you so Cheerios world. and you just eat your Cheerios who knows <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much no, you're this was very great. well I mean I really love I love the idea of of seeing this all in these terms rather than just oh yum or oh yuck yeah I mean it, it's mm -hmm. it's bigger I, so thank you because you guys are like these food geeks and I love that I think that's great so <laughs> You're one too. You just don't know it yet. <laughs> oh, she knows it. I think I've had Susie in like I'm, six I'm classes coming, in the I'm last six months. I'm, I'm coming to cheese next week. <laughs> Ooh, I'll see you there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Okay. okay. Bye bye.